so want to hear the beneficiaries first. I can't help myself just because I'm curious, you know, who those might actually be. Well, Kelly, just to be clear, this is a net negative for the U.S. consumer. This is not a good thing that these payments are going to resume. But as we think about companies that are best positioned here, Walmart really stands out. Uh, they're clearly taking share in grocery with that double-digit growth far outpacing the industry, taking share on e-commerce uh, up 27 percent last quarter. Uh, and they've got some really compelling growth drivers in, in um, their marketplace initiative, advertising on the international front. And as you look at a little bit longer term, uh, we think they're going to be a leader in automation. That's really going to help them. So uh, a lot of reasons to like Walmart here, despite this net negative here for the consumer on the horizon. Now, you know, I'm not, that's a little less exciting now that you say it that way, because we always, you know, to think of Walmart as a beneficiary of kind of a pressure on the consumer does make a lot of sense. Melissa, let me turn to you. Who are some of the names people think could be most vulnerable? The vulnerable names are really the ones selling discretionary merchandise. And we're already hearing that a lot of those companies are under pressure. So companies, American Eagles come up, for example. If you hmm. think about kind of the, the retailers that cater to younger consumers who are going to be making these payments again early in career, Figs is another name came up. They sell scrubs. Right. People might be, you know, splurging on a higher end scrubs. Uh, the other companies that have come up are even TJ Maxx hmm. that they sell clothes and clothes are definitely something people can put off or just not buy at all. Bradley, what are some of your most vulnerable names? You know, on the vulnerable side, we're continuing to wor worry about Target. Uh, our credit card data has continued to show some weakness over the last three weeks, down double digits in our proprietary data. Wow. Uh, we think that that uh, you know, mid-market approach that they've got, really catering to a broad swath of Americans, puts them more at risk uh, for their customers deciding to shop over at Walmart. Um, you know what? We also think this could continue to put pressure on Best Buy and Big Lots, uh, some other names where the customer is already uh, avoiding those retailers to some extent right now. And that's, Bradley, what I think is so interesting is that, and to point, Melissa's point about uh, American Eagle, well, we know Abercrombie's doing a little better right now. So it's almost like if you scanned the names, like Target has some issues, obviously, after Pride Month. Like, if you scan the retailers that are a little more vulnerable anyway, does, just, uh, does this just give them another headwind versus some of those that seem to be executing very well right now and can kind of weather this? That, that's exactly right. I, you know, in, in some cases, we feel like we're getting through that pig in the python, if you will, of the pandemic unwind headwind finally getting behind us. But as we layer in this, this $400 a month payment that we think many Americans are going to be facing uh, come September of this year, uh, it just looks like a continuation of some of that pressure on discretionary spending that's going to unfold as we head into this all-important holiday season. Yeah, and I know you do have Ollie's and Five Below. Um, you know, in some ways, those are discretionary, but obviously a much lower price point. You can have, Melissa, that kind of spontaneous fun, but but not at such a high level. Um, do you think most retailers are, are somehow preparing for this? I mean, what could they do? It's hard to know because this decision came really, it's a one-two punch, right? We're waiting for Supreme Court, but we heard about the moratorium ending after the retail earnings cycle did. So analysts didn't get that opportunity to ask retailers about it. We heard from Darden, a restaurant company, that they are expecting a little bit of an effect, but they said that a lot of their restaurant um, customers are actually making 100 k or higher and so might be more insulated, more willing to keep going to Olive Garden and companies like that. We really haven't gotten an insight into retailers. And, you know, like we've talked about, they're under pressure. But to Walmart and Brad's point about that, I actually spoke to some borrowers who were saying what they were planning to do if once the payments start again and if their forgiveness does not happen. And one of them specifically told me, I'm going to start shopping for more of my produce and meat at Walmart mm -hmm. again. And I've been shopping more at places like farmer's markets that have a higher price tag. Interesting. And also, just to kind of disentangle this for a moment, we've been really emphasizing the $400 a month that's kind of coming either way. The question, Brad, tomorrow morning is whether the Supreme Court is it, is it 20000 or 10000 that Biden's proposing to forgive? This would be a lower-income consumer. So who would be more uh, sensitive to that ruling? It's, it's a great question, Kelly. Um, you know, I think it'd be the lower income you know, that would be more sensitive if this forgiveness goes through. Um, but make no mistake, even if uh, the Supreme Court allows the forgiveness to go through, uh, there, there will still be student debt out there, and it still will be a net negative on the consumer. 